Good evening. Welcome to the February 24th, 2015 Reading School Committee meeting. We'll start with public input. Seeing no, I, I checked. <coughs> Seeing none. Um, Dr. Doherty, it would be okay if we took some agenda items out of order. We'll wait on reports and we'll get started sure. right away with our audit desk presentation. I would actually have Mr. Barker do the honors. Oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Barker. Thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the school committee. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us here tonight. I'm pleased to share with you uh, an exciting opportunity that we've piloted at the high school this year uh, called Rockets Help Desk. And thanks to the creativity and enthusiasm of our history teacher, Mrs. Kerry Gallagher, and her students, Megan Catalano, Julia Donahue, Emily Fusco, who couldn't join us this evening, and Melanie Lee, the Rockets Help Desk has helped to create a student-centered, project-based learning opportunity that is improving students' and teachers' experiences using technology. Uh, in this year's pilot program, Mrs. Gallagher has used her duty period and offered her lunch to assist her student leaders, who also have often given up their lunches and uh, in their study halls, in order to develop a series of multimedia tutorials uh, which empower students and teachers to better utilize technology that, uh, at cl classrooms at RMHS and also at, uh, was it Birch Meadow, I believe, at the fifth grade classroom? Barrows. Oh, it was at Barrows. Yeah. Excuse me. They have also presented at a number of conferences and trainings to illustrate the possibilities of student-led tech teams. And in fact, recently, uh, their work was even recognized by two online publications, The Journal and Edutopia. And then I think Ms. Gallagher will share with you she just received an email from, um, from Stanford University. I'll let her talk more about that. So some really excellent accolades have been thrown their way. Uh, this evening, Mrs. Gallagher and two of her students, Megan and Julia, will share with you some of this exciting work. Ms. Gallagher. Welcome. Hi. So, um, so I'm Karen Gallagher and Julia and Megan. Um, so the, the girls and I put this presentation together for you. Um, just to introduce you to Rockets Help Desk, our website, um, looks like this and was recently redesigned by Megan and so you can see all Sorry. Hi. Nice way to walk in. <laughs> you can see all of the work that the students have been doing. Every post that's there is a student produced post. Every piece of media um, is it was produced by them. Um, sometimes it's through connections that I've made for them. Sometimes it's through interest from teachers in our building and sometimes it's their idea and their idea alone because they're really um, passionate about a tool and they think that more teachers and students in our um, school and in our district should know about it. So a um, couple of examples, um, there's a most recently a tech integration profile of um, the principal of engineering class and their class blog and how they use the class blog to document their learning, um, a tutorial of Socrative, which is a great formative assessment tool that we use in the classroom quite a bit. And the, um, the girls are going to talk about a lot more and show you some examples of their work. Oops. Okay. So, um, our mission, which Mr. Bacher kind of covered with you, is to allow students to use their own curiosity and motivation to direct their learning and do research on the tools, um, test the tools, and then report out on the tools to um, teachers. They also um, work very hard to network with real ed tech professionals and entrepreneurs. Um, they have, they're gonna talk about that networking um, tonight. And it's really a, a team effort, so I'm not really there to tell them what to do. I'm there to offer advice and guidance if they need it, but they really run the show. <coughs> um, and in order to accomplish this mission, as has been mentioned, um, they create screen screencast tutorials. We do classroom visits, um, like our classroom visit into the fifth grade classroom at Barrows. Um, and also we do in-person consultation with teachers who are looking for solutions. We have one scheduled for tomorrow with a math teacher. Um, and they'll talk about a couple of other examples that we've done already. Um, and also networking with other technology specialists, students from other schools, ed tech professionals, going to conferences. Um, so there's lots of different aspects to it. Okay, so one of the major things we do in Rockets Help Desk is create screencast tutorials for different apps, whether it's through recommendation from other teachers or things that we decided to do ourselves. So screencasting is when we record the computer screen so that people can see what we're doing and hear our voice as we do it. So I'm going to show you part of one. This is a Prezi demo that I made, and Prezi allows you to make different presentations, so this will take you through the steps on how to do it. Hi, 
Hi, this is Megan with Rockets Help Desk. Today we're going to be learning how to use Prezi. Prezi allows you to make presentations like a PowerPoint presentation. It can be accessed on an online browser or downloaded as an app. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Once you're logged into Prezi, you can see all your projects. If you want to edit one, just hover, hover over it and you can click edit. When you open up your project, it shows you an overview of your slide. You can then move to your different slides on the left by clicking on the different slides. You can click the plus button to add a slide, and then you can drag it around to decide where you want it. If you, if you want to get rid of one, you can just hit delete. By clicking the little house on the slide, you can go back to the overview of your project. Prezi also lets you customize your project. You can choose a, choose a background image or choose a theme which changes the colors of your project. I like this one. To change the title of your presentation, click on here and then you can type right in. I'm going to add an exclamation point. If you don't like the layout of your presentation, you can click edit path in the bottom left corner, which allows you to drag around your different slides. Ooh, so fun. <laughs> to edit the different slides, click on the left on the which one you want to edit. You can then add a title. And you can add an image and add text. You can even, if you click insert at the top, you can insert symbols and shapes, a YouTube video, and much more. Prezi automatically saves your work, which is great. Prezi also allows you to work on your presentation at the same time as other people working on your presentation which is similar to the way Google Docs allows you to work on the document at the same time as other people. Once you're done, just click this little arrow and it'll let you share it or, or download it. Once you're done, you can present it or just click through all the slides. Just make sure that you log out when you're done. Now you're all set to make your own Prezi presentations. So that one was requested by a science teacher, and it was used so that she didn't have to teach her students how to use Prezi, she could just teach them the science, and then they could watch the video and make the presentations. So. Another important element to Rock's Help Desk that we've really only got to experience once was what Mr. Bacher had mentioned before. We went to Barrows and visited Miss Becker's classroom, and this is just a video of us showing what we did with some dramatic music. <laughs> we did there was we went to this elementary school classroom and we showed them how to use Google Forms. It's like an in-person tutorial and it's really nice. Uh, 
two weeks ago in my English class, we were sharing something on a service called VoiceThread, but everyone shared it wrong on Edline, so my English teacher had me show them in real time how to do that. And it's more a personal thing than just the screencast, which is also nice. Okay, another thing we do is networking. Now this involves different things. One thing we do are Google Hangouts, which is, it records our video chat that we have with other people. We do these with people who we meet in person or people who we want, it, who've reached out to us. We did one with, this is the one with Swarup Raju. He's the creator of Educan. We've also done one with Rishon Richards who is the creator of Explain Everything, and we met him at MassQ. Now, this picture is extremely hard to see, and I apologize, but this is a picture of us at MassQ, which was held at Gillette Stadium, which is a place where we presented, which is another form of networking that we do. We presented to Expanding the Boundaries and Blue Ribbon and some other things. So I'll show you part of the Google Hangout with Swarovic. Hi, this is Julie with Rockets Help Desk, and this is Megan. Hello. And today we're interviewing Swarup Raju, uh, who is the creator of Educanon. Educanon this year was listed as one of the top 10 apps by EdSurge, and today we're going to talk to him. Hi, Swarup. Happy to be here. Okay, so um, can you tell us a little bit about your background before Educanon? Yeah, sure. I can tell you a little bit about how the company got started, too, with that, and how I fit into the picture. Picture. So Ben, my co-founder, was actually a teacher, and he came up with the idea for Educanon while he was in the classroom. He was using video with the students. He wanted a way to engage them more and make sure that they were paying attention to the content of the video. So he made the first prototype. And you'll find that with a lot of tech tools, that it's really teachers that are coming up with the first ideas for the products, because it's teachers that really understand the pain points in the classroom. And I went to college with Ben, and in my roles before Educanon, I was mostly focused on the marketing side of things. I worked at Kaiser doing this, uh, Kaiser Permanente, it's a large healthcare system out here, and also startups, uh, working on ways to find users, activate them towards products, and that's really my role at Educanon. I'm the guy that's out trying to find new users for our platform and finding ways to make our product great for them. Um, so I know you talked about your friend Ben in education, but how has it personally affected you? Are there any really good teachers you've had that have inspired you or anything like that? Yeah, and I think that for me, it's the impact that online video has. So I learn best through video. I'm the kind of guy that needs to pause material, rewind it, review it before I can really take grasp of the material. And that's what really excited me about Educanon because with Educanon comes all the possibility of all, all of the great aspects of online video. You can always pause or wind a video, but there's also increased engagement that we can add into video, increased uh, by, by questions, and, and make sure that the teacher is really understands where I am at the, in the material. In your opinion, how can... Okay. So that's a little bit of that, so you can get the feel for what it is. How do I go back? Oh, no, we're already there. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so we also did a Google Hangout with Andrew Marcinic, who we will be presenting with at Blue Ribbon. And we like presenting places because we get to meet people. We presented at Maskew, which is where this picture is from, on that rainy day. But um, that's where we met Rayshawn Richards, which was really nice because he, we got to meet the person who created the app and learn about it from him, which was a really unique experience. So yeah, networking is an enjoyable part of Rocket Help Desk. Something that just happened today is um, there's a, a math teacher from Eaton who asked us to produce a tutorial on Haiku Deck, which is another app, uh, presentation app. And so I took a picture of Emily Fusco, who's the one producing this tutorial today, while she was actually recording the tutorial. And I tweeted it out, and I tagged Haiku Deck in the tweet, and they um, responded. And so I'm trying to set up another Google Hangout with um, one of the CTO of Haiku Deck. So a lot of times, the way we end up connected with these people is just through our own sharing and communication online with the EdTech community. So that's another kind of project that's coming up right now. Another aspect of what we do, which kind of fits into all three of the categories that Ms. Gallagher mentioned earlier, is in-person consultations. What this is, is a teacher or even a student 
what we've had so far is two teachers, one who will be tomorrow, and a nurse came for an in-person consultation. What we do is they can ask us a question about anything, or um, in this blog post that I made, Mr. McSweeney, one of the English teachers at Reading High School, is <coughs> asking for some advice on how to build this project for his students. What he did was he wanted to make a blog, but he didn't know, should I make everyone make a blog, or should I have one blog, what should I do for that? So we gave him advice on that, and it gives them just choices, rather than telling them, this is what you should do. And uh, the nurse also came in just to see how you could share it on Google Doc. So it's like an in-person, it's like a tutorial, but it's more personal, <coughs> and it's more personal than the classroom setting as well. Okay, this is me. So um, we're really excited that um, this year the girls volunteered their time. They spend a lot of time with me. Um, purely of their own accord because of their own interest in technology and researching and wanting to try you know, as much as they can and share their ideas with other people. Um, and it was something I was passionate about. But we're excited that next year, um, Rockets Help Desk is gonna be, be offered as an elective for credit. So all of our efforts have paid off. We're very happy. Um, we also have submitted an REF grant proposal so that we can acquire some of our own equipment. Right now we're kind of borrowing from everywhere in order to produce these tutorials. So hopefully we'll be awarded that. That would be fantastic. And we're planning to present at the Blue Ribbon Conference here in April with Andrew Marcinic, who actually has worked in three different districts in Massachusetts to build student tech team models. And so he's kind of an expert in the field. He's actually authoring a book right now that should be published by the end of the year on the student tech team. So he's, he's like an expert on this. Um, but our help desk is definitely unique as compared to the ones he's worked on because all of his have been produced in one-to-one -one districts and ours is a BYOD district. So we have, um, we have our own little niche that we're establishing our own little expertise in and we're looking forward to continue to build it and share it with other people, so. And, oh, yes, we put all this effort into this, <laughs> into this slide and I almost forgot. So that's our blog URL um, that I showed you at the beginning. That's the um, URL to our YouTube channel so you can see all our video tutorials and our um, interviews with experts that we've done so far and we continue to post there all the time and I'm on Twitter you can follow us at um, the Rockets Help Desk and if you'd like to submit a request you can email us at rocketshelpdesk at gmail.com we all have the password so any of us can respond to it like I said it's not just about me it's a collaborative effort and if you don't want to write all that down and you have a QR scanner you can just scan the code and it'll pop up on your on your phone and you'll be all set so and that's that's it Ms. Kelly, you want to mention the uh, little Stanford story you shared with us coming up? Oh, so <laughs> 10 minutes before I got on my car to get here, I got an email, and Stanford University is flying me out there in March for two days to be on a panel at their personal learning symposium. And I've never even been to California, and I'm so excited, and I hope I can get the days off to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, they found me through some of the articles I've written for Ed Surge, and I feel very fortunate. So I'm excited. Should be fun. Thank you. Awesome. We're more old-fashioned, so we're kind of taught that we're not supposed to use our phones or Please. meetings. I know, I know. Yeah. And my, my daughter comes home, and she's so excited about being in your class. And she mentioned this course for next year already. Well, so hopefully she'll take it. I would love to have her. Well, <laughs> what's great is they really are kind of, I think, disarming the adults who, who do share that same experience, sure. teachers included, administrators included. I'm, I'm certainly on the list of, of people needing help. So I'm trying to find time in their busy schedule. Uh, but, I mean, they really do exemplify that uh, the authentic learning, as you can see. I mean, there's a, there's a true product. Um, and, and you're talking about the communication skills, you're talking about presentation skills, problem solving. Um, and what's amazing to me is, you know, through the hard work of the kids and the teacher, you're talking about volunteering time. So with a course and with really more uh, investment behind this, I think, I think the, uh, it's really a limitless opportunity, so. Could I ask a few questions sure. and I'll open up the community if it's okay? I didn't uh, catch what year you guys are in. I'm a junior. And I'm a sophomore. Sophomore, thank you. Um, first, a technical question. The video that you produced, the slide switching was on beat with the music. What software were you using? You made that. I, yeah, um, I filmed that while they were working. <laughs> and I just used iMovie. Okay. The yeah. transitions were great. They were right on the, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, that's really hard to do. A lot of people that create videos. That's it was iMovie. It's really easy. We should do a tutorial on iMovie. Yeah. 
I will say that. Other uh, questions from the committee? Comments? Dr. Doxer? I just, I want to gush. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think this is just so wonderful. I remembered your presentation about the history class, the paperless history classes last year, and how you engaged the students and you were spreading the word in the schools. And I'm just really struck by how authentic it is. Um, it's truly needed in our schools and by me, so please come over. <laughs> Actually, I'll go over your Send spot. Send us an email. <laughs> I'm wondering, I'm hoping there's a tutorial on Twitter because I... Not I, yet, but we can do that. Um, I'll put my hand up for that. <laughs> but I just think that what you're doing is such real learning while you're also helping adults learn. And so there's mutual learning going on. And at the same time, in a, in a district that struggles with its budget, you're filling a much needed hole. We don't have the money for more technology specialists. Um, and you are there for us all and the students so that new things can be tried. Teachers don't have to, I mean, they always have to stick their necks out and I appreciate that so much. But they have someone there to help them when they have an idea or want to try something new. And I just think that is just an ideal that I hope, I know our schools strive for. And I just want to thank you for putting, I can only imagine how much extra time it takes from all of you. So thank you. And I'm thrilled to be part of a school system that supports this and looks for this. Mrs. Broski. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to gush too. I'll be shorter, but I'll gush as well because I agree completely. Um, my kiddos are younger, and every time I get to hear a presentation like this, I just get excited that they're that they get to have this. So just that was fantastic, and it was very inspiring. But I do have a question for the students. Um, when you do this kind of learning, you get to do so many different things, right? You're presenting, you're researching, you're creating content, you're also teaching and helping people. Were there any components of all of those things that particularly inspired you that you found the most rewarding of all the different things you're doing? What, is there one piece that really made you feel like this is what I really love? Um, I'd have to say it's the teaching other people about it because one of my teachers along the years said that the easiest way to learn something is to teach it to someone else and by doing that I'm learning a lot and I really liked working with those elementary schoolers. I agree completely. That was the best part of this, um, being able to teach other people. Thank you. So I just have a question about um, maybe what sort of the strategy or the focus might be for the class next year in terms of teaching other people. Um, any idea about whether that's going to focus on, you know, here at the high school or you're going to try to really set some goal of like a certain out number of outreach or outreach at, at like all of the elementary schools and I guess it might maybe it depends on what you get for enrollment and <clears throat> in the class, but certainly the elementary outreach sounds great. Um, and I'm, but I'm sure the people here at the high school that you're helping are equally as um, excited about the learning that they receive too. So I just don't know if you had any goals sort of set for that. Um, I don't think I have any hard goals that I. One of the things that is, is an important part of this is that we're not forcing anyone mm -hmm. to do anything. It's based on interest and request. Um, we, I think next year one of my goals is to, and um, you guys can let me know if you agree, is to get the word out more about that we're available. I think we've been successful at that at the high school, but I'd like to get it out more district-wide about that we're, we want to help, we want to come in, uh, we want to problem solve with students and teachers throughout the district. You know, because this year it was all volunteer time, our time was limited. Next year with it being a full elective and like a part of my day-to-day -day job, I'll be able to dedicate more time to strategizing how to do that. And the, the great thing about working, partnering with students is that they come up with better ideas than I do when, it ten, when, it's, when we're talking about getting other kids to buy in. So yeah, I think that's definitely part of our mission for next year is to reach out to other schools. I've, I've spoken with um, some teachers and educators at the um, middle school level who are interested in trying to build this model into, into the middle schools, but you know that's kind of long term, and I definitely want to make sure that the students are a part of that, and hopefully we'll be working toward that over the next couple Maybe. of years. Maybe there'll be some opportunity um, down the road. You guys are seniors, you know, like sort of more a senior project where you could take on sort of leadership of that middle school team, you know. So, so there's maybe some opportunities to 
continue this, you know, both as a class and then individually um, in that sort of independent study mode, but uh, leverage that to, to spread this to the, I was thinking particularly the middle schools where then you could bring another team up to uh, be engaged and, and sort of be a feeder for your uh, high school process. Yeah. I should mention we have quite a few, because it's all volunteer time and it just, it, it happens that it fits into these, these girls' schedules. Um, there were a lot of students who were interested and, and couldn't fit into their schedules because yeah. of the way the pilot was structured. So we have lots of like honorary help desk people who like <laughs> come to Maskey with us and I have a field trip going to the Navasite Data Center in Andover on Friday and Parker's coming with us yeah. and uh, several other of my students who are definitely interested in tech integration and wish they could be a part of this. So because it's been a pilot, we've been really flexible and we've been able to work people in. But these two stick <coughs> with me like day in and day out, so they're my... They're like my founding members. For Can I ask sure. one other quick question? No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, so um, you just, I know you're planning it for next year, so I know a lot of kids have you know, really tight packed schedules, no studies. So one of the things is when they, you have a half semester class, you can't run it opposite gym because it's every day. But, so I don't know if there's different models that you think about for these kinds of classes where you say, can you set it up also as a model that could run opposite of um, PE? Sorry, I said gym. I took gym here. Seriously, I took gym here. But um, PE, run it opposite PE. And, uh, so anyway, I just, yeah, and, and I, I we, can't imagine the scheduling nightmare, but. It, we actually were just talking about which period would it fit you know, best in, in terms of the need, in terms of availability. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be something as the scheduling process goes along that we'll work with uh, Joe Kane, our scheduling guru, and uh, try and okay. find out the, the way to best appeal to kids yes. based on their availability. Sometimes all kids have is that op that opposite PE. Right. It's a good thing yeah. the school committee doesn't control class schedules. We look right. to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any if you'd like questions? to help, I'd <laughs> invite you in. Mr. Knight? Yeah, very, very impressive. And um, I've used some of the technology you've talked about, too, um, and uh, excited to see it being used in, in uh, classrooms as well. Has anybody used any of this technology to flip their classroom yet, or is any interest in that so far? To what? What well, flip the classroom yeah. would be using um, like a Prezi um, or a Khan Academy type of thing. So you'd go home and um, have a lecture at home, and then you come back to class and actually discuss and, and sort of work individually. Mm -hmm. I guess that's how it's best described. Yeah. There are a couple of teachers who are doing that independent of this, but mm -hmm. yeah, this would be a great vehicle to. I think the challenge is always you know, sharing the practice with one another. Right. That limited amount of PD time or PLC time that we're trying to find some consistent opportunities. Uh, this would be a vehicle where you know you hear an idea in a classroom, and and this might be a student group that can share that, share that wealth, that intellectual wealth. I can tell you that um, one of the one of my colleagues in my department, Gary Dentremont, has flipped whole units successfully awesome, with yeah. his students, and he's done a fantastic job. I actually observed some of his teaching during that unit last year and wrote a blog post about it on my own blog, not this one, um, and shared some of his really awesome work. Also, the um, the interview that you saw that the girls did with um, Swarup Raju, that particular app, it's it's actually it's actually web based. It's not an, an iPad app. Um, allows you to take YouTube videos or Vimeo videos or videos from any source really. It, when you put them into Educan it, it adds you to insert questions. So as students watch the videos, it automatically pauses the video and a question pops uh -huh. up and they answer it and it tells them immediately whether they've gotten it right or wrong and why. And then the teacher gets the feedback live as they're watching the videos as to which questions they're getting right or wrong. And because of the connection we made with him, he was, he reached out to me and said that I, I'd love to do a one-on-one -on -one video chat with any of the teachers in your district who are interested in learning more about the tool and I would give them a free full subscription which is normally quite expensive to our tool and I've had a couple of teachers take me up on that and so they're starting to, to work toward it and that just has happened within the last month or so. So yeah, there's definitely interest in that particular model but most of the teachers I know um, when they flip, they flip here and there, not 100% yeah, of the right, time, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so yeah, there's definitely flipping. Great, that's good Lots to know. Lots of flipping going on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be interested in, in perhaps some Gary Dentremont or whomever's doing it to come in and explain it to the school committee and, and the public in general to see, because it's an exciting uh, approach to teaching and, and uh, you know, really solid use of technology, a valuable use of technology other than Sometimes it's sort of forced into classrooms, whereas in this case it's 
ideal for learning, so. Dr. Doxson? <coughs> I'm just wondering if I can ask the students um, if you could talk a little bit about some ways that this might have impacted what it feels like to be a student here at the high school and in the district. I just think, I'm just wondering because there's the role of the student where the student is always the recipient of the knowledge versus you've sort of flipped that. And um, I'm just wondering if that has impacted how you <coughs> feel about your high school experience. Um, when we had our, our meeting with Dr. Doherty and Mr. Rocker about suggesting this as a class, one of the things that I really added for which exists in the PLTW classes, if any of you know what those are. They're um, Project Lead the Way, which are these science classes that are very independent and cool, and I took one last year. But this is cool because it's completely, it's independent. You're there, you exist, you matter. <laughs> <laughs> but Megan and I really get to like make our own choices, and it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, even in the planning stages, I would say, you know, the students are definitely, you guys are both at the center of it calling the shots, which is, is very refreshing, to be honest with you. And I think you guys are surprised by that, but uh, Ms. Gallagher certainly creates that, and, and uh, the students take full advantage of it, which is great. And also, um, nope, forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> 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 no, I <laughs> um, I did a project freshman year in Prezi, and I had no clue what I was doing, so I wish I had this then. Um, but I really like that students are doing this at the high school. Like, if I saw, like, Megan did, like, a video, and I had another question to ask her, like, I think that's really nice that there's a student that's really, like, an expert in it that I could go to. Thank you. <coughs> Well, listen, thank you very much. We don't usually keep our, our guests this long, but it was a really exciting topic, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank, okay. thank, you. thank you again. Good luck at Stanford. That's awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. yeah thank you, sir. Put in a good word for our students at Stanford, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one to crack. Make sure you see the road down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Just right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was an excellent way to start the meeting. Uh, we'll go into our standard reports this evening, which I'm sure are going to be just as exciting. Excellent. So, students first. All right. Yeah, I'll go. All right, so um, our MHS right now, it seems like everything's kind of coming to a calm. You know, it looks like we're going to have our first full week of school <laughs> in a month and a half. Um, spring, uh, excuse me, winter sports are ending, so like the field house was very calm after school today, unusual. Um, yeah, so we've kind of been thrown off by like the six snow days, so I think we're starting, finally starting to get back into it. Um, I haven't been here since real world problem solving, so I'll give a little report on that. Um, the juniors we participated in during the midterm week in January, <coughs> we were split up to groups of eight, and we were given problems. Um, we, well, we were given the the, uh, yeah, the problems were how to reduce plate waste at RMHS, um, how you would, how much it would cost, how would you install a green roof here, um, water conservation in Reading, how you would achieve that, and how you would advertise Reading online, um, make it sound appealing, which it is to people wanting to move here. Um, it was groups of eight, um, usually four boys, four girls. I thought it was a great experience. We, everyone, um, uh, displayed, presented to a panel of experts. Um, not, I've never done anything like it in, you know, the 11 or 12 years I've been in Reading School. So, I just think it was, it was like something that I feel like when once we leave RMHS, something we'll be doing more of. So, really rep uh, preparing us. That's what I liked. Thank you. Um, so this Friday night from 5.30 to 9 o'clock is mini golf. It will be throughout the hallways of the high school, and it's benefiting a lot of the clubs, especially the choral department at the high school. So it should be a good time. That's 5.30 to 9. And also next week is the school's dodgeball tournament. Um, this is a really fun event. I went last year. I'll be going this year. And 
a bunch of <clears throat> uh, clubs and gr just groups in general at the high school go in the field house, and it's a little scary, but it's a lot of fun. So that will be next week. And the weekend of the 6th, 7th, and 8th, uh, the Drama Club will be putting on the production of Antigone. So you should be there. I'm sure it's going to be great. Thank you. Other reports from committee members? Mrs. Webb? Uh, maybe this isn't going to be allowed, but the um, swim team it was at um, State this past weekend, and they came in 15th. And um, wrestling was at... Um, States and I know Adam Morton finished first place at 152s and he goes on to all states and there may be a couple of other of the wrestlers that also go on to all states but he was our champion at 152 so exciting and there may have been other events that other people know about but that was at least Saturday and Sunday I'm gonna go next uh, last night we had a uh, we had town meeting uh, at the Performing Arts Center, we did, and we were all present, and it, uh, <laughs> it was a nice evening. The first thing I noticed when I got out of my car was not only the cold, but uh, the excellent job that we've done with sidewalks around the high school, uh, clearing areas, and I'm sure the students appreciated that when they returned back to school uh, this week. So thank you very much, Dr. Doherty, and, and, and to your staff uh, and to the town as a whole. Uh, town meeting was really successful. Last night we discussed modular classrooms, um, and our needs there. Uh, there was excellent debate all around. I thought it was really healthy discussion. Um, I, I was, you know, corny as it may sound, but I was kind of proud to be in Reading last night. I thought that the conversation was uh, cordial um, and professional, and uh, I, I guess it's easy to say that because the outcome was what we had uh, hoped for. Uh, but again, I, I appreciate all of Reading's town meeting members uh, and the families that showed up last night. Um, and obviously you can tell that the modular classroom uh, project uh, was approved by, by town meeting. Uh, we'll be talking about that later on in tonight's meeting. No other? just want to comment yep. that I thought you in particular did a, oh, thank you. a great agree. job. But I really thought you handled yourself mm -hmm. and the school committee extremely well. Thank so you. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. It was easy. Uh, <laughs> reports from administration this evening? I actually have quite a few, so, so dig in. <laughs> and I'll, I'll start with the snow removal. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> dig in. Um, so starting with Juno, so all these uh, winter blizzards have had names. I don't know if you've been following the names. We've had Juno, Carrie, Linus, Marcus, Neptune, Octavia, and most recently this past weekend, Pandora. Um, I think we're closing in on the record for snow. <laughs> so... Um, our snow removal efforts here at the high school and in the district began immediately after Juno, which was the blizzard back on January 28th. Um, Kelly Colon, our director of facilities, has had uh, multiple discussions with Chief Burns and also uh, an engineer that we, a structural engineer that we've used from time to time here in the district to help identify critical areas on our rooftops that we should be mindful of and, and um, be checking. Um, the department has been diligent in monitoring and removing snow from the rooftops in the district, paying close attention to the most critical areas um, and all the buildings in the district. Um, those areas include the large flat roofs, any transitions and drifting areas, um, and also where our rooftop equipment is. We want to be able to have access to it and make sure that we're maintaining it and it's still um, in good working order. Um, they continue to monitor daily all of the structures in the, build, uh, in the district. Um, those efforts have included building walks, checking both internal and externally for any signs of damage or structural stress. Um, of particular areas to investigate have included like the north facing elevation where the changes in the drifting has occurred. Um, and as you know with the wind that we've had, even though they removed snow, the drifts are there again the next day when they come in. Um, during the last two weeks, our staff in conjunction with external roofing contractors and other external vendor vendors have um, reviewed the areas and have systematically removed snow from a number of uh, from a number of the buildings in the district most recently we worked on um, this past week while school was out we uh, worked on the high school gym Killam and I believe the crew went to Barrows yes. one day yes. um, each and every school in the district has been treated for snow removal either from the roof or from the ground with roof rakes um, we have seen drifts that have reaccumulated in those high-risk areas, and we've gone back and removed them again. Um, 
I, I say all this because we've had a number of phone calls and inquiries from parents, and I want to assure them that we are uh, managing this on a daily basis and, and very mindful of, of the safety of not only our students but our staff and, and, and the building, uh, the district. So, so that's my snow removal update. May I ask a quick question? Absolutely. Uh, a number of years ago, we were concerned with Wood End. That was the first time we had the committee had really discussed mm -hmm. roofs and safety and, and snow. Uh, has Wood End presented any challenges this year, or, or or because of your efforts, we've just been on top of it? We've been on top of it. Okay. We did um, we did rent, and you may have seen it um, a, a large like lift yeah. crane that was here at the high school to help us get on oh, that's areas. What that was for. Yeah, okay. that was to help us to get on the roof here at the high school, and then we had it moved from here by the company that we rented it from to Wood End to help us access the the, the hot spots on Wood End. Excellent, thank so you. So we have it. Looked at it. Thank you, Mr. Knight. Yeah, just oh. the cost associated with that. How do we bear that? Is that something that we're going to have? To um, a lot of the uh, uh, so uh, a lot of the cost. Uh, we've used a lot of our internal resources. So we have had we have incurred some overtime expense because we did have um, a weekend where we had mandatory overtime for our custodial staff. That was immediately after Juno because we knew it was the first of many storms. Not that we could have predicted, you know, Linus and Carrie and Neptune and all of all them, but we knew that it was early in the winter. So we did have overtime expenditures. Um, we are reviewing the budget to make sure that we're, we're okay. And um, we did have a, a crew that uh, helped us from the um, Department of Corrections, which was uh, essentially free labor. Um, they were here during school vacation week. And, uh, and they sent a crew um, for four days, and they helped uh, helped excavate uh, a number of the rooftops here, um, which so was. So FEMA did. Oh, thank you. That's uh, reimburse the state. Would we, would that come? We have been. Um, so thank you. I I failed to put that in here and to mention that we have been tracking our expenditures because um, there is money available as a result of Juno, and then I think it was either Octavia or I'm not sure which other one, uh, which name storm. The two blizzards. Yeah, that the, the governor, when he declared a state of emergency, that opened up um, the, the checkbook, if you will, right. to potentially get reimbursed. So we have been mindful and, and tracking that separately so that we can put in for reimbursement. Mr. Robinson. So I think I mentioned this at the last, the last meeting. meeting. Yep. Uh, I would still keep uh, notes on everything beyond that because mm -hmm. I think we should have a discussion maybe with the town manager about uh, coordinating a you know getting those funds with the potential overage that's going to happen with snow and ice mm -hmm. removal. Oh, absolutely. I know um, Chief Burns as an He's, He's the emergency response. preparedness yeah, director. So he, for the, thank you. The <laughs> um, so the we've been working with him on on the emergency, uh, on the tallying of the expenses and 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 submittal for reimbursement. Thanks, Mrs. So, Webb. So I just want to clarify. So submitting for reimbursement, you're talking about for FEMA or other state programs, but um, also, I mean, the town is going to come back to town meeting at some point with. The overage, yes. Okay, so yeah, that, we're, we're that, tracking we're part the totality. of that. Yes. Okay, so I just want to yes. make sure. Is, yeah, is and 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 to clarify, any funds that we may or may not receive back from from MEMA or FEMA um, would go into the general fund. It wouldn't come back to us. It would go into the general fund. So certainly, oh, right, right. Um, certainly, there would be um, you know conversations to help offset or mitigate any uh, any overage. We we do have an overtime budget for the for the winter for just this. So. Um, uh, Kelly and I are meeting on Friday. Uh, payroll will post tomorrow in Munis, so we'll have the latest round of, of overtime, and we'll be able to sit down and kind of go through and identify um, the dollars that we're spending and and, uh, and stay on top of it. Yeah, w what I was suggesting was any anything extraordinary that could ultimately cause us to have to go to another part of the budget, which we right. don't want to do. Correct. Okay. It'll also be interesting to see what happens with our spring athletes uh, in, in, those f in the fields. And I can, yeah. I can already envision the um, uh, healthy debate going on in the field house for space when spring sports oh, yeah. start up. So yeah. good luck. And it starts in two weeks? Yeah. I believe. So, but thank you very much for that. I think this probably, maybe it's not appropriate. So that's going to be definitely a challenge, especially for our track teams, I think, in the you know, anybody that's on the road. I think those roads. baseball players are going to have a little bit of trouble, too. I don't think, <laughs> well, that, I don't think that infield's going to be clear. I, I'm sorry. I've, there's been in the news a lot of issues with 
kids being in the road and I'm just was uh, you know obviously any of the sports that might typically be on sidewalks or the roadways that's going to be the fields are no, have three right. feet of snow on them I, so unless they're snowshoeing as part of their sport it's going to be tricky I'm sure oh, Mr. There's facility. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm no, please. Saying, no, that's right. You know, there's facilities that I guess potentially we might have to rent, uh, like a Rams or one of those indoor. We usually facilities. we usually deal with this the yeah. first couple of weeks of spring sports. Yeah, it's, so yes. it's pretty typical. It's, it's just going to have to be extended a little bit. Yeah. Just, just making some contact. You know what I mean, Doctor Dory? <laughs> <laughs> just keeping it lively, really. Thank you, um, Martha. Oh, I have more. I know you have. <laughs> okay. That's, that's just the first Let's one. Let's get to it. <laughs> um, the next one is um, this past Wednesday uh, during vacation week, we successfully tested the emergency generator here at the high school, um, which uh, was a coordinated effort because we um, we didn't want to just shut off the power and, and risk our, our the hub, if you will, for all of our um, – Technology is here at the high school, housed here at the high school. So we um, shut down our servers and our head end room um, appropriately, and then did this the generator test, and then brought everything back up. Um, so that was that happened last Wednesday, and then um, this as a lot happened on vacation week, as you can tell from my report. Um, we participated. We hosted the Reading Police Department conducted training exercises at Wood End. Um, last week, uh, Wood End Elementary School, and there were a number of administrators from the district that um, either observed or participated. I participated. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was extremely helpful because as we continue to look for ways to improve our ALICE training and our ALICE drills, it was helpful to have a different vantage point on, on what the police response is going to look like. So it was, it was a very participatory uh, exercise, and, and we thank the police department for allowing us to observe and participate <coughs> in that. Um, my last report was about the modular classroom, so I don't know if you want me to take you through that now or if you want to address that later on in the meeting. Or uh, Could I ask if there are any other reports or any, oh, other, sure. yeah. or any other questions on Mr. Robinson? I have a, a question on, on the maybe... It would wait until your okay. capital presentation, but I noticed that uh, coincidentally we're putting off all of the roof projects. Uh, I have notes for that for the capital. If, okay, we can. If we, wait. Let's, why don't we wait? If that's okay. Thank you very much. I have a question. I'm not sure if it should be now or later. The question that I'm most frequently asked is: So, how many days have we missed? And <laughs> Are they just going to be added on at the end, or no one read my blog post then? I <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Ooh. blog, Twitter. I, sorry, did a we'll whole. Get the, we'll get I, the kids back. I did a whole thing Wait, on that. What an excellent segue, Doctor Dory. Do you? Want to <laughs> my bad. Um, we have you six snow days. It brings yeah. us to June twenty fifth, okay. um, which ironically is the same exact date we've gotten out of school the last two years. So right now we're good. Um, if we have to look further. Um, we, we still have a few days in June we can take a look at. Um, if we need to go longer than that, which I hope not, because it means we're going to have some serious issues. Um, you know, we could take a look at Good Friday. We could take a look at April vacation. There are definitely things we can do, but I, I don't anticipate at this time. What it's gonna day be is Good Friday? What date is Good Friday? It's Friday. Friday. Uh, no. <laughs> I think it's April 6th. Right? <coughs> it's, it's late. Oh, I want to say it's late? March 30. Yeah, so it's March 27th. Dr. at this point in time, there is absolutely no change in our schedule. No change. Just yeah. to, all, the, uh, all the students out there who think they know what's going on. The last day of school is June 25th. 25th. At this right point. Yep. Uh, we don't see any problems. Uh, seniors are psyched at this point, um, and they're, you know, a, as far as that world goes. Uh, if we do decide that we want to have a conversation regarding the Good Friday day off, that's a school committee Absolutely. Uh, vote, and we should probably add that to an agenda just to have that discussion so it's, it's available, Dr. Doherty. But at this time, business as usual. April 3rd. April 3rd. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that, Mom. I knew that. <laughs> um, were there any other questions regarding the snow days, Andrea? Well, like, I've heard, have you heard that a lot of students have been 
freaking out about April vacation. Like, they're going to take sure. away April vacation. So, no, so that's not true. we are absolutely not taking okay. April vacation. We don't need to do anything yeah, right okay. now. And, and until we have more snow days, then so we can have that discussion. But I don't think other people... I didn't like, get the name. I know. It, well, realize that? Uh, See, one, of the, one of the things that... See, and I think they're like, listening to the media. Yeah. Because other districts started, but, yeah, are started after yeah. Labor Day. Mm-hmm. So they're in a much different crunch than we're in. Okay. Um, school districts that started before Labor Day I don't have the same crunch. And Boston is way worse. So yeah. Mm-hmm. And some, some districts took more than six local, days right my, now. My daughter's district is up to June 30th right now. Yeah. So well, spread the made, word. We all have April vacation right so now. <laughs> they have to read my blog. The reason why we have <laughs> student representatives at these meetings is you guys are our voice in the hallways, right? So you're going to tell everyone, announcement. guys, Chill. I'll tweet it out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so that we actually end this meeting at some point, we're going to need to keep this moving, right? Dr. Doherty, for the re- further reports? I do. I have a, I have a few. I'm ready I don't, for it. Did you have something? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> I knew I could trust you. Yeah. Um, I uh, want to first talk about, uh, we, there was some, as you know, there was some discussion about uh, 9C cuts. And the cut that's going to affect us the most this year, the, the, these cuts are for this year. FY15 is the, is the MECO reduction at the, uh, at the state level. Um, there was a cut made by Governor Patrick in November, um, and Governor Baker made an additional cut to the MECO budget um, a couple week, or the last couple weeks ago. Um, the total reduction for Reading is going to be $27,814, which is a 6% cut, I believe. I, I think so. Pretty close um, to it. So right now, we're in the process of figuring out what that means, and so uh, we'll have a better indication on that. I mean, at this point, it's not going to affect transportation. It's not going to affect the program itself. Um, there'll be some, some things that will get reduced, maybe um, like after-school transportation, things like that. But right now, you know, we're, we're in the process of figuring <coughs> that out. But that will be the most, most likely the biggest hit from the 9C cuts. I, I don't anticipate there will be any other major hits um, from any from the current 9C cuts. Um, we All of the MECO communities are um, crafting a letter that we are sending to uh, the governor so that he is aware, not for, not for this year because we know that it, the 9C cuts are probably irreversible, um, but for future budget consideration, um, of the of the MECO program because this cut could mean it, it was about a million p- dollar cut um, that's could be the starting point for next year's <coughs> FY16 budget mm-hmm. which is going to be announced um, I believe uh, next week, next week. Um, by the governor uh, his house one budget so so we are sending a letter to the governor of all the MECO communities on behalf of that Mrs. Mrs. Webb. I'm sorry. Mrs. Webb it's our our legislators all lined up with us on that Brad, yes. Jason, yes. and Jim. Okay. Dr. Doxer. Thank you. Yeah, are there plans for us to bring a contingent from Reading to Metco Lobby Day again this year? I, I honestly don't know the answer to that at this point. Jason. Can I suggest it might be a good idea? Director. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, this, this, this really gets, I mean, Patrick and Bay, I mean, this That's is their ridiculous. annual cut. Right. They go to Metco. It's the first thing they go to every year. We have this discussion. I mean, every year we got to go in in there and and ask for more money for transportation. Every single year they do this. Mr. Knight, I was just uh, actually curious as to how many Metco districts there are. I mean, I know of many, but I'm curious if you knew. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. They're not not important. I can look it up. Google it. It also includes, uh, it's not just Boston, it's Springfield also. Yeah. There's a Bo- not Boston Mecco and a Springfield Mecco. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Dari. Um, I do have a couple more things. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Keating on registration, now that, that we know um, the direction that we're going to be heading for next year. So uh, we're in the process right now of, of putting together Keating on registrations. Uh, parents, and, and we did send something out to parents this morning of the kindergarten families for next year. Uh, we'll be sending out their school assignments um, and full day, half day assignments next week. So they'll be getting those next week and they're, they're aware that, that they'll be getting those. Um, I do want to put in a plug. I know Martha already talked about it. I do want to put in a plug 
and thank the facilities department and, and the Department of Public Works for the, the job that they did on the schools, on the schools of the shoveling and the plowing and removal of snow. Um, you can see these big snow mounds all over the place. But, you know, I, I was in constant contact with both DPW and facilities on the days that we were trying to figure out if we were going to have school the next day or not. And, um, you know, they, they were pretty straightforward. They did everything they could to try to have school. Um, but really it came down to just sheer, sheer exhaustion and, and you know, because some of these um, people were working 25, 30 hours straight. Um, and it just was an impossible task to, to be able to stay up with storms. But they did a great job making sure that when school was open, that everything was safe and, and clear. So I just want to put out a, um, a, a kudos to them. Um, I also, uh, and I sent an email to you yesterday, and, and it was announced to the Josh Wheaton community uh, that Karen Feeney is going to be resigning at the end of the year. Um, at the next school committee meeting on the 9th, I will uh, be giving you um, the, the search process that we will be using with the um, tentative dates for that process. Um, we'll be running it like the types of searches that for principals that we've we've run in the past. But um, I'll have this. I'll send that out to the school committee for the March March ninth meeting. And then um, the last thing tomorrow evening, um, and I did say this the last school committee meeting also. Um, the Rotary Club of Reading and North Reading is going to be hosting the Taste of Metro North right here in the field house. Um, the reason why I am publicizing and announcing this is that Rotary has been a very good friend to the Reading Public Schools and the Reading Education Foundation. They're very supportive every year in providing um, resources to our schools. Um, the one most notably this year was the Early Literacy Project for our kindergarten and first grade students with the book bags and then went in red to students. They're actually going to be doing that again over the next two weeks as part of Read Across America. So. Um, you can buy tickets at the door. You can buy tickets online. Um, it's a great night. There's over 28 restaurants that are going to be there. Um, it's really a good evening. It's a great evening. And our chorus and band, uh, Jaws Ensemble, are going to be performing at it as well. What time does it start? Uh, 530 to 7.30. Thank you. So that's my report. Thank you very much, Dr. Doherty. Okay. We have so many choices we can go to now. Excellent. Um, <coughs> is it good? Okay, we could. Um, why don't we go in order? I guess. Sure. Okay. First. So the first thing under continued business is the kindergarten and elementary space needs discussion. Okay. Is that good? Sure, that's fine. See, it's a democracy. Yeah. Um. Sure. <coughs> so um. I uh, distributed earlier this evening via email and printed out copies for you all, uh, just a, a memo updating you on the modular classroom project. Um, as you all know, last night for the uh, town meeting, um, the funds were appropriated to uh, procure six modular classrooms. Um, so over the next, uh, next week or so, we're very, very busy. Today, um, Kelly and I reviewed the final draft for the request for proposal. Um, and the data was submitted to the central register. It's, it's a week waiting period, so it was submitted today, but it won't post until a week from now uh, on March 4th. Um, we also had a conference call with town council this morning, and uh, he's going to review the draft and the draft contract so that everything is in line, ready to be distributed on, on March 4th. Um, March 4th, the RFP will be posted on the Central Register. It will be advertised in the local paper, and it will also be posted at Town Hall, um, and uh, documents will be available to the public um, to pick up. On March 12th, we're going to host a mandatory walkthrough um, with site visits at all three sites, so any prospective um, bidder or vendor um, will have to attend that meeting to walk through the properties and get a visual. visual. Um, in tandem with that, and I, I forgive me, I forgot my notes, so I'm speaking from memory on this. We have been working with PAR um, for site uh, survey um, to identify where, where the best location is for them. And that information, along with plot uh, plans, site plans. You. Site plans, thank you. Site plans will be distributed to any vendors that come on the 12th uh, as well. Um, Excuse me, one moment. Mm -hmm. You said you were working with PAR. Who's mm -hmm. PAR? Uh, 
Sahar is a local engineering it's firm. It's an engineering firm. Oh, an engineer. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're who we've contracted with to look at the retaining wall. So we've used them for a, a couple of things in the past, and, and so they're familiar. The town officials require much more detailed site plans <coughs> from what we would have been showing. Sure. And so they've been working at that, which shows the location of the exact location of utilities, um, things like that. Thank you. Um, on the 19th, March 19th, all sealed proposals are due back uh, to central office by 10 a.m. So from the 19th to the 21st, uh, we'll have a review of the proposals and, uh, and rank them based on our evaluation criteria. Um, to, the goal is to have uh, the information to the school committee um, well in advance of the March 20th. Uh, actually, so I sent you an email. No, that's okay. And, and so uh, thank you, Martha. No. Uh, <laughs> Our meeting for that week in March was scheduled earlier. Uh, we're going to move our meeting to March 26th, which will give us more time. So thank you. Please thank continue. you. So, um, so we requested uh, of the chair to, to move the March 23rd meeting to the 26th, as you just heard. Um, that will give us time to get the proposals out to you all so you can review them and uh, ask any questions prior to the meeting and then have a, a thoughtful discussion on the 26th. We'll make a recommendation to award the contract. Um, the goal is to have the contract executed with the uh, preferred ben vendor by the 30th. Um, that gives us a 19-week lead time, which is pretty close to what we need. You know, we, we've been told um, that we need anywhere from 18 to 20 weeks lead time. So right, we're right in the middle of that with 19 weeks. Um, we'll develop a project schedule, obviously. Um, the bid document does specify that they need to be ready for occupancy, meaning the building inspector has to deem them you know, ready for use um, no later than August 15th. And uh, we will continue to work with town officials um, so that we're following all appropriate code specifications and, um, and any permitting requirements. And all that language has been drafted into the RFP. Great. Thank you very much. Questions on that timeline? Mrs. Webb. Um, I, did, I have a question on, um, so the reviewer proposals, so the 19th to the 21st, and then... Um, does that include, is that DCAM or is that not part of this, you know? So yeah. how do we, how do we, what information do we use from the state to assure that these contractors, proposed vendors are financially soluble and reliable and all that? Um, this process is very much guided by the state and by Chapter 149, and there's actually a section, there's a subsection to Chapter 149 specifically for modulars. Okay. Um, so that is our, our, our guiding light, if you will, and, um, and DCAM certification is one of the required forms for um, vendor submission, so um, there are a number of them, and that, and that is uh, included in it. Okay. Other questions from the committee? Mr. Knight. Chris, just checking on the sure. count. So are we meeting the 23rd and the 26th? Or no. Or just meeting the 26th? No. Ho, ho. Just the 26th. Just the 26th. Okay. Good answer, right? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, okay. As part of the evaluation committee, just to let the committee know, um, I've asked Mr. Robinson if he'd be willing to sit through those meetings and, and be, be our representative, and he's agreed. So thank you. Um, oh, on the... The, tw the 19th to the 21st, you mean? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. More questions on the calendar scheduling? Okay. Nope. Thank you very much. Okay. That was easy, right? I, I mean, that might be next. We are moving right along. I, <laughs> do you want to catch your breath or do you want to no, keep going? No, no, I'm good. Great. <laughs> Let's keep going. Great. Uh, a capital plan update, please. Hey, it's me again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, the FY16 capital plan, because we moved um, a few things around, uh, both on the town and the, um, the school side, it was necessary to defer some, um, some projects into FY17. Um, so uh, again, Kelly Colon and I, with the help of um, the town manager, um, thoughtfully looked at it, and actually these suggestions were, uh, were actually from the town manager, so it was, and we concurred with the, with the recommendations. So um, <coughs> as Mr. Robinson pointed out earlier, alluded to earlier, a lot of these are rooftops. So I'll, I'll go in order. Um, the rooftop at the town hall has reached its useful life. And the allocation of the FY16 um, funds to begin that work was originally in the capital plan. And while the roof has reached its useful life, we can defer replacement <coughs> to FY17 
with, with not too much concern, with the exception of the annex hallway. And that's the funds that stayed in FY16. So um, it's, the roof will be replaced in its entirety, but it'll be done in, um, in um, segments. <coughs> um, we can use, if there is an urgent repair need, we could use um, extraordinary funds to, to address any urgent needs if, if there, that came to be. So um, we were very comfortable with, with splitting that project and move, deferring some of the money to FY17. Um, so while the West Side Fire and Main Street rooftop repairs and replacement work was in the capital plan for FY17 and they have reached their useful life, the overall condition is still functioning and moving that repair replacement um, to FY17 should not cause any significant issues with the integrity of the current roofing. Um, but we do recommend that we do replace it in FY17. So we wouldn't want to push it out much further than that. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. So may I, I'm just asking, I'm assuming the town manager thought of it. As we move things out, they, are we moving them out at the same cost? Because things go up when you, I mean. Um, no, that's a very thoughtful question. I appreciate that. We, Kelly and I, um, uh, Ms. Cologne and I are going to get together and look at the capital plan going out. This is a capital plan that, um, that was developed um, before we each started in our new roles. Yeah. And, um, and so we have some, after her first full year here, she may have some <coughs> thoughts of where, where more urgent need is. Um, and at that point for the fall, we will update pricing appropriately for the, the projects that are out in the near term. And otherwise, looking out 10 years, we can't really you yeah. know, estimate reasonably. But, but to your point, uh, a year or two out, we, <coughs> we should probably adjust prices. So that'll be a full review, not just the changes? Yeah, it'll be a full review. Okay. Thank you. There was a third bullet. There was? The Main Street Fire Station. You're oh, that's, I talked about both of them together, oh, the West oh, Side okay. and the Main just Street. Just wanted yeah. to make sure. Nope, nope. Thank you. Excellent job. Mr. Robinson. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Move to revise the FY 2015 through 2025 capital plan as follows. Re reduce the town hall roof repairs from $200,000 to $80,000 for the annex hallway portion only and add the balance to the th of the th and add the balance to the $300,000 requested in FY 2017. Defer the west side roof repairs to FY 2017. Defer the Main Street Fire Station roof repairs to FY 2017. Second. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion carries 6-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, under new business, uh, I've had some discussions um, with Mr. Phil Vaccaro over the last few weeks uh, regarding uh, the varsity baseball field, the Morton field, um, which is not under school committee uh, school control. It's actually under control of the town. However, uh, Mr. Vaccaro is very interested in uh, changing the name of Morton field to include uh, uh, Mr. Peter uh, Moscarello, who uh, retired as head baseball coach and a longtime teacher at Reading. Uh, you'll find in your packet tonight the letter that I received from Mr. Vaccaro. Uh, what, I was, what I would like to do this evening is to have a discussion on that and hopefully as a sign of support to uh, have a motion voting in favor of that request from Mr. Vaccaro. Um, I could not agree with it more. Um, I think that Mr. Moscarello was a, an, an excellent, uh, outstanding uh, teacher and coach who served Reading um, faithfully for many years. So uh, that's next on our agenda. Sorry for that long intro. <coughs> Is there a discussion from the school committee at this time? Mrs. Webb. This is a, um, a question, and I fully support this, and Great. Mr. Moscarello was actually my math teacher for Algebra II. Um, and... He was a very good teacher at that time. Um, but I, I just, I don't know what the selectman's process is. I know that we've done a lot of work on our yep. processes, and I think that um, it's really important when you make a big decision like this that there's some really good, strong process behind it. So I'm really, you know, 
um, I feel comfortable with what we've done, some of the changes that we've made. Don't know what the selectmen's <coughs> process is, whether it's, you know, this is the letter and that suffices. I certainly, from um, just the school committee, you know, member uh, viewpoint, support this recognition, um, but their process is their process, so I can't really, I might not, I might not like it or I might, or I, maybe I think it might need to be enriched, but it doesn't matter either sure. way. Uh, so I think that no, I, I, I appreciate support that. it. I appreciate that. I'm not aware of a selectman policy for the naming of building and facilities. Mm -hmm. They don't have one. And okay. this is in no way any, meant to be any sort of directive or uh, this is simply a way of the Reading School Committee saying, Board of Selectmen, if you're looking for our opinion, we think that this would be an excellent uh, decision. However, in no way uh, is this making a, a directive of the selectmen. No, is that I fair? Think okay. uh, it's fair, and I think you know we hear often about um, transparency and process, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I know that we've worked hard to do that around this particular subject of naming yes. and. Probably some people might think that we spend too much time talking about it, but at any rate, I, I so I think that whole transparency issue is really important, and you know the selectmen have whatever process they have or don't have. But um, again, he has, Mr. Mascarello has made some fabulous contributions to the district over his career. I don't, frankly, know um, that much about. Who I'm assuming it was Mr. Morton, not Mrs. Morton, Mr. who that field is ma named for. Newt Morton. Newt Morton. Was okay. His name. I, I don't personally, I think it was always yeah. Morton Field as right. long as I was here. Sure. So I don't know that much about that. I think that's excellent. Uh, uh, hopefully, if, if the selectmen uh, do change the field, it would also be a wonderful time to remind Reading who Newt Morton was right. and, and why we've named things after such right. wonderful people. So, Mr. Robinson. Yeah, I you know, I support, I, I like Pete and support this. Well, I, I guess I'm just curious. That the, I assume the selectmen had, I mean, they've certainly been involved in our naming process. They don't have a committee, a subcommittee. There, and there's no set <coughs> policy like the school committee has on the town side for naming. Hmm. That's why we have the West Side Fire Department. <clears throat> I mean, there's no originality there, Mr. <laughs> that was a joke. Main Street. <laughs> I thought there was a real Mr. West. I, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that until I realized Main Street Fire Station. So. Um, is there a motion, Mr. Robinson? Yes, there is. Move to support Mr. Vaccaro's request to rename the varsity baseball field to, to Morton and Moscarello Field. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion carries 6-0. Um, uh, if, if the school committee wishes, I will send both an email to Mr. Vaccaro uh, and the chair of the selectmen, just letting them know. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> move to accept the $300 donation from our Bella Insurance <coughs> to the Joshua Eaton school to be used to offset transportation costs for the grade four trip to the Boston Symphony. Is there a second? Second. Great. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Uh, move to accept the $500 donation from Alliance Energy to the Joshua Eaton School to be used in the areas of math and science. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? I just have a yep. question. So, you just got to thinking, I s Arbella, how do, do, do parents or PTO it's members? Probably, it's probably through a parent, yeah. okay. is my guess. Because it was interesting, you know, that they would be making a donation to the symphony, an insurance company. So. Oh, we had a second on that motion. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries 6-0. Mr. Robinson? Uh, move to accept a donation the amount of $1,400 from the Friends of Reading Football to be used to support a coaching assistant position for the 2014 season. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is, is that the 2015 season or is that a back payment? No, kind of thing? This, is, this is for the 2014 awesome. season. They're behind, and, and I would like to, uh, if it's okay. Certainly. Um, 
Mr. Tom Connery did come in to see me, and um, there was a miscommunication. I, I, he wanted to be here this evening to, to be here for the donation. Um, I do believe he's going to be on the agenda for a, another donation that's coming up uh, at a future meeting, so he'll be here, and we can thank him then um, for their support. But this is for the 2014 season, yes. Thank you. Uh, was that seconded? This is Engelson, I apologize. Great. Discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry 6-0. Your, your hand was up there? Yeah, Sorry. I saw it. Um, I don't think we're ready to approve. That screen. No. No. No, no. that'll happen on March 9th. Uh, yeah. 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 That. Move to approve the open session minutes dated February 2nd, 2015. Is there a second? Second. Great discussion. Mrs. Doxer? I just had suggested to Ms. Engelson um, something that I would like added. Um, do I need to sure. say what that was? Why not you? Um, on page two of the minutes, um, when I did my report, I intentionally included the fact that different teams were participating together as well as different generations. And so I just wanted that noted because the high school robotics team was coaching the Lego students and also the science, the oh, Coolidge Science Olympiad team was running the freshmen. And I just think it's really not noteworthy in our town that teams collaborate with one another. Um, and so I just ask that that be added. And I also ask that um, it be noted that the Human Relations Advisory Committee is looking for new members. And she said okay. Great. <laughs> oh, not on the minutes. Let's approve the Thank minutes. Um, all those uh, uh, that approve the minutes uh, as amended? The minutes were dated February 2nd. Okay. We're still all raising. Are we all raising our hand? Yes. Awesome. Uh, Mrs. Webb, I know we're all raising our hand. I, I Yeah, okay. I did. Six zero. I got my eye on you down there. I'm distracted. No, no it's um, completely okay. Questions, Mrs. Webb? Yes, so I just was looking at the yep. calendar, making sure that I changed March 23rd to the 26th. And I noticed that March 11th FY16 budget presentation to Finance Committee. So Correct. that's to Finance Committee? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That also happens to be Junior Guidance Night here at the high school. And I think there's at least two of us on the committee. Three. Who are three. Right, who have juniors. <laughs> Good thing your spouse is going to of them, it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some of them, it's their first juniors. Yeah. So it's important. Like, some of us were old juniors, so I don't know. But anyway, old it's juniors. important. No, it is we, important. Obviously, if, if, if school committee members cannot make that meeting, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, make the sure. Fin yeah, the finance the committee finance requested okay. that we move. It was the 18th. It was moved to the 11th. Oh, okay. So it, that wouldn't necessarily need to be the full committee. As many committee members as no. can attend. It wouldn't correct? necessarily have to be. Okay. <laughs> it, it will be posted. But I'll be there. It will be posted. Do you have a junior too? <laughs> no, I'll be at the FinCom meeting, even if I had a junior. Do you? Have School they committee comes questions first. Questions in the FinCom? Or? No. No. Not received any. Doctor, do you have a, a location for that? Will it be at town hall? The that fin will be at town hall. Okay, great. Yes. So. Uh, Mrs. Webb, thank you for that, though. Our next school committee meeting is March 9th. Um, after that, two days later on Wednesday, we'll have the FinCom presentation. We'll then meet the 26th, as Correct. Mrs. Webb noted. And then April 6th, and then it's elections. Wow. <laughs> she says <with> a smile. <laughs> Seeing no further business, does anyone want to? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Mrs. Webb voted yes. 6-0.